Alright everyone, my name is Lich Junkie and today we're back on, well we're not back on anything technically um, because in the last video I kind of felt that we'd finished the cursor off um, to a standard that was adequate but I'm still not ready to go back to the other project yet so um, what I'm going to be doing in these last few videos, there's not going to be many now until we go back, um, is I'm just going to go through a few little aspects of my own program um, the sandbox one which originated from the very original sandbox one uh, sandbox series which was quite a while ago now and it evolved into no man's sky um, with a few changes obviously and stuff and then that's when I started doing RTS and then we did cursor so it it was one of my first if not the first um, series I ever did and um, basically I, I built on it quite a lot as you can see it's quite big and that's why I'm going to keep this open instead of leaving it shut because it bounce a long way um, but yeah today we're going to be going over something that's quite important that I didn't even know existed uh, originally until someone pointed it out to me and it's something called frustum culling I think that's how you call it um, and it's to do with how the world generates so I would show you um, obviously it's it virtually impossible but uh, this world is pretty huge and obviously not that way it's obviously the other side um, or maybe maybe it's not this version even but you can make it really really big uh, so this could go on endlessly effectively um, there is a physical limit of course by the DS grid because this is all run by DS grids so you can't have a infinite DS grid if that makes sense but you can destroy them and keep going and whatnot and the reason why we can do this isn't called for us to So, I didn't mean to do that, but whatever. Uh, so, normally when we, uh, in the past, had our generation with the create event, which it creates the level, this is all pretty much the same. And then we had, we didn't have auto tiles. We had the drawing, so in the draw, it will just draw it once, and that would be after the create event had done. Uh, however, for the first and culling, what it does, here, isn't it? is it effectively only ever draws what's on screen which makes sense if you think about it so because we're using grids we can have stuff off screen that's not drawn we know it's there we're just forever going to be drawing one head if that makes sense so what we do is we set that with the height it's fine then we delete the layer now what this does is it deletes every tile that's currently in the room and sets it again so then what it does is it loops through but only loops through our view so you see that we start off at the left side finish on the right side so we're only going for those cells within the view and of course we're going one either side as well so that if we get rid of this for example I'll show you what happens um, it does still work but it'll, it'll give you a bit more of an idea of how it works as well and then basically it just draws it every single um, step event. So you can see how it would have it have less of an effect on the RAM because it's it's not storing it all the time. But in the short term, it has more of an effect on the GPU because it is constantly redrawing everything. So it is kind of a toss up. Um, on my machine, I'm running at 60 FPS constantly. But this is what I was trying to show you. So if you take out those missing variables you get this kind of screen stuttering at the side and this is because this cell here isn't technically on screen fully so until we move in it won't be drawn in and the same for this way and the same for any side we go apart from that side apparently um but yeah that is why uh we need the numbers either side it's very important we add them in but what you should do is pretty much on every game that involves sandbox uh, stuff and large worlds I would recommend adding this in purely because um, imagine you've got a world which is this big it, it's infinitely big it's absolutely huge it keeps going um, beyond there if you're trying to draw every single one of these blocks and imagine this is just one line as well imagine we've got hundreds and hundreds of lines going up um, like you would in a real world now that's a lot of strain on the machine you're drawing all this 
um, all at one point and that's almost guaranteed to just crash it instantly because you were drawing it all at one time as well all in the create event and that's that would never work theoretically to get this to work you have to use this amount and that's what we did on the sandbox um, and it never occurred to me that if we had like two more the machine might just crash <laughs> um, that had never uh, come across my mind but yeah this code uh, what it does is it means that if we're this player here we still only have to have this same amount in despite the fact that this all exists so this whole world here this all exists but we're only ever viewing this bit so it makes sense For example if we move a character away from here this all gets deleted we no longer have that there if we move to there then this all loads in see how that's um, quite effective in pretty much all side-scrolling games um, even on like runner games and platformer games I can see this working uh, especially if you've got discord involved that would be almost ideal to put that in the situations where it wouldn't work is if you had a room um, if you had a room and in the room you had objects so objects work differently you can't redraw them and keep putting them in and out that doesn't work but instead what you can do is you can uh, deactivate them so if you are using objects instead of tiles I wouldn't recommend it but if you are um, in like a runner game or something and you, once they get off screen you can deactivate them which is very useful because it means they're not running in the background um, especially as objects take up quite a lot of RAM um, it's important to unload them so yeah those are the things that realistically to improve optimization in games you should really try and do uh, in the next video I might try and go through chunking and how theoretically it would work um, I've not managed to get this to work effectively in my projects but I'll go through how you could theoretically add in chunking um, and maybe I'll just go through some other little bits and bobs to do with it but ultimately this is just optimization of um, what is your programmable game Twitter, if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, or do you guys want to do, and I'll talk to you in the next one.